Hello everybody, my name is Dr. John Lucio. I practice integrative medicine and pain management in Jefferson City, Missouri. And welcome to our channel, J&J House Call. And here's my wife. Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Sue. I practice conventional gynecology and integrative medicine. Welcome back to our channel. If you've never joined us before, we love integrative medicine and keeping you guys healthy. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so and hit the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded our next video. Today's topic's really good, it's the paleo diet. Before we do so, we hope you guys are staying safe and upbeat, which is our next video about how to keep your spirits up during this coronavirus pandemic, especially if you're quarantined at home. Yep, so uh, today we're gonna talk about the paleo diet. It's a very popular diet, and last two weeks we talked about the Atkins diet and the keto diet. And just a little bit of background, what is the paleo diet? Well, paleo diet refers to a time in the Paleolithic era when, during the Stone Age, about 2.6 million years ago. And the theory is that we need to go back to the basic diet of what our ancestors ate, which is kind of makes sense a little bit. Um, it, it revolves around the concept of evolutionary medicine, where we look back at how we evolved and what kind of things really should we should be eating now. And um, it actually has some very crossover, a lot of crossover between Atkins and some of the keto uh, diets that we use now. It does focus a lot on high protein diets with a lot of um, vegetables and uh, fruits. Uh, it does not aim to be low carb, but by the type of uh, choices of foods that you eat is naturally a, a low carb. But it does cut out a lot of whole grains and legumes and refined and processed foods, which is actually a pretty good thing. So what are the differences? Well, keto doesn't discriminate what types of fats you should consume. Paleo diet um, advises to avoid certain types of oils and trans fats. The interesting thing, the oils that it does approve of, such as olive oil, um, back in the Paleolithic area, I'm not sure how early man would have created olive oil, because you really need at least a, some type of rudimentary press to create olive oil, not so much with some of the processed oils that are out there. The other thing too, in keto diet, you can uh, eat peanut butter, uh, but not on the paleo diet because it's considered a, a legume. Um, so how does paleo compare to Atkins? Well, both allow fresh meats. Uh, paleo does ask that you use grass-fed uh, meats and free-range chickens as well, fresh seafood, uh, fresh vegetables, and as I mentioned, olive oil, which I said, which is interesting because back in the paleo era, there really was no way to get uh, uh, olive oil outside of having knowledge of using a press, which we didn't have. So some of the things that are not allowed in the paleo diet, well, you can't, cannot use dairy uh, products, uh, whole grain, beans, soy, um, peanuts, and lentils. Now, you cannot use refi refined processed foods, which is actually a crossover even with Atkins and, and uh, even keto diets as well don't recommend that. So which actually it's a pretty good uh, way to approach a diet. But things such as soy, corn, sunflower, safflower, and uh, sesame oils are out of the question. And the Atkins diet also does not allow sugars, processed foods, breaded or fried foods, unfortunately. Unfortunately, too, with the paleo diet is that one size fits all. It does not allow the body to actually try different types of carbohydrates and to determine which ones actually work for someone. So you're kind of constrained a little bit in terms of the paleo diet. The question of it, is it actually good for you? Well, in 2016, they actually looked at uh, one study and it showed that it was very favorable uh, in terms of help preventing uh, heart disease. Um, and then same, another study that same year actually showed it wasn't very good. So um, you've got to be very careful. Unfortunately, again, there's no long-term studies that show whether it's actually good for you or not. The new re research that just came out did show that there is a increase in a blood biomarker, which actually a predictor for heart disease, which is kind of alarming a little bit and raises some red flags re regarding using the paleo diet. All three of the diets actually have shown to decrease uh, weight initially. Um, but again, is it sustainable and how do, it works over a long period of time is still unknown. So in review, the keto diet, you eat very little carbohydrates, a very high fat, 70 to 80%, 20 25% protein. Uh, it induces ketosis by burning fat, so you're not using glucose. The Atkins diet does do the same thing as keto initially, but then there's this phase three or four of that diet that starts to introduce um, more plants and some uh, uh, healthy carbohydrates. The paleo diet, again, does almost very similar thing. You, use, uh, you can't eat meats, 
uh, fruits and vegetables, but you um, do not have uh, the advantage of, of eating grains and certain legumes. Now, to have a really good review of, of the paleo diet, I came across two great references. You can read about them or you can actually follow them on YouTube. One is Lauren Cordain, C-O-R-D-A-I-N. We'll post who that individual is. He is a well-renowned expert on the paleo diet. Um, and the other one is uh, Christina Waringer, W-A-R-R-I-N-G-E-R. -R -R -E She's an archaeologic geneticist. And um, her talks uh, you can find on YouTube as well. Very interesting plus minuses regarding the paleo diet. Um, again, there's a lot of questions behind it. It's like, which paleo diet is it? You know, that we have a lot of genetic and environmental variation in our, in our world. Uh, which environment and which paleo diet where they uh, um, applies to us is different and we have different genetic makeups. So please understand that whenever you try a new diet, make sure you can contact your physician or discuss it with your physician to see which one is the best for you. So unfortunately, as I mentioned, there's no long-term study for any of the diets. And uh, they go as long as maybe two years and they drop out because the people can't sustain them. Um, keto diet is a hard diet to be on for a long term. Some people do it better than others, get constipated, they don't have the roughage no, they get. I um, think I'm more like you now, don't get on any diet. Just <clears throat> it's just genetic. It's more, more, um, and I'm going to kind of, when I finish the diet series, mm -hmm. what we've been able to find is really diversity is the key mm -hmm. to any healthy diet. And uh, next week we're going to be talking about vegan diet. And when we finish the dietary series, we're going to come up with some conclusions that are based on a lot of the evidence that's out there. Um, it's not going to be based on anything we're selling, any any uh, supplements or anything like that. It's just going to be based on science and what we've used in it, even in our practice. Stay tuned for our next video about how to keep our spirits uplifted during this time of the coronavirus pandemic, especially when we're at home alone and isolated. So long, everybody.